Good day and we are now on our lesson 4 which is all about preparing starch and cereals dishes. Cereals are usually starchy fats or grains and cereals are the most important group of food crops in the world named after the Roman goddess of harvest, Ceres. Starch on the other hand exists in nature as the main component of cereals and tubers. Under this lesson are the types of grains, whole grains, and cereals. Also, we will tackle the nutritive value of starch as well as the functions of starch. Here are our lesson objectives for this day. First is to identify the kinds and sources of cereals and starch. Second is to cite the nutritional value and components of starch and cereals. And then for the last one is to give the functions of starch and objectives of proper cooking of starch. Let's have our activity one, think and be enlightened. So study the picture in the screen and try to answer the following questions. For the first question is, what is missing in the picture? Second is, what are the guidelines do we follow in positioning dishes on the plate? And then for the third is, what are the nutritive value of the missing photo? Now, the arrangement and overall styling of food upon bringing it to the plate is termed plating. Some common styles of plating include a classic arrangement of the main item in the front of the plate with vegetables or starches in the back, a stock arrangement of the various items or the main item leaning upon a vegetable bed or side item. So what you have seen in the picture is an example of classic arrangement. Item location on the plate is often referenced as for the pace of a clock with 6 o'clock the position closest to the diner. A basic rule of thumb upon plating and even in some cases prepping is to make sure you have the five components to a dish. We have protein, traditionally at 6 o'clock position, vegetable at 2 o'clock position, and at an 11 o'clock position, sauce and garnish. Starchy foods are a good source of energy and the main source of a range of nutrients in our diet. As well as starch, they contain fiber, calcium, iron, and B vitamins. Let's have first the definition of the word starch. It is the second most abundant organic substance on earth. It is found in all forms of leafy green plants located in the roots fruits, or grains. Many of the food staples of man throughout the world are basically starchy foods such as rice, corn, cassava, wheat, potato, and others. Starch is the source of up to 80% of calories worldwide. Besides the significant role, starches have been used in food manufacture, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, textiles, paper, construction materials, and other industries. Let's have the types of grains, whole grains, and cereals. Cereals refers to cultivated plants of the grass family that provide edible starchy grains or seeds. These are seeds or grains of grasses and are cultivated in order to obtain the largest bounty of their fruit or seeds, which consists of germ, endosperm, and bran. Important cereals are wheat, rice, maize or corn, oat, barley, rye, millet, and sorghum. For the first type of grain is we have rice. Rice is considered the staple food of more than half of the Philippine population, which is approximately 80% Filipinos. Rice, these are edible starchy cereal grain and the grass plant by which it is produced. Roughly, one half of the world population, including virtually all of East and Southeast Asia. 
they are wholly dependent upon rice as a staple food. 90% or 95% of the world's rice crop is eaten by humans. It is cooked by boiling or it can be ground into a flour. It is eaten alone and in a great variety of soups, side dishes, and main dishes in Asia, Middle Eastern, and many other cuisine. These are the type of rice according to processing. First, we have the polished rice. White rice in which the germ and bran have been removed. It has less nutritive value and keeping quality is excellent. Polished rice refers to rice which has been milled to remove the husk, the bran, the germ, and varying amounts of the nutrients contained in them, leaving a starch-rich grain. Polished rice has less moisture, mineral, biotin, niacin, protein, and fatty content than brown or lightly milled rice. Second is we have brown rice. They are otherwise known as unpolished rice. It contains more nutrients compared to polished rice and it has nutty taste. Brown rice is a highly nutritious gluten-free grain that contains an impressive amount of vitamins, minerals, and beneficial compounds. Consuming whole grains like brown rice can help prevent or improve several health conditions including diabetes and heart disease. For the third one is we have enriched rice. These are rice with added vitamins and minerals such as titanium, niacin, and iron. Enriched rice is a white rice which has been mixed with an assortment of vitamins and nutrients to make it more nutritious. Many companies make this product and the packaging usually clearly indicates the level of enrichment in the grain although those levels may vary after cooking depending on how the rice is being cooked. Another type of grains is we have corn. In the Philippines, the corn producing regions include Cebu, Bohol, Leyte, Cotabato, and Misamis Occidental. Corn is the staple food in Mexico, Central America, Southern regions in the USA, and part of Africa. Most corn production comes from the USA. In Europe and Great Britain, corn is called maize, from which maize, the term for corn in our country, comes from. Corn is an important crop in North America since many animals raise for meat and eat corn, not to mention the corn that people consume. In addition, products like high fructose corn syrup and ethanol fuel are made from corn. Many people also love to eat corn on the cob slaughtered with butter in the summertime. In many parts of the world, it's called maize instead of corn, which is an old English word meaning grain, that is corn. Let's have the varieties of corn. We have sweet corn, or the yellow one, lagkitan or waxy corn, it is color white. We have also yellow flint, cebu or beetle white flint, and then popcorn. Corn is a plant that grows long ears of kernels on tall, tall grass-like stalks. Many large farms grow fields of corn each year for human or animals to eat or to make corn-based product. To give you an idea on varieties of corn, let's have this image. So these are the different types of corn. We have bent corn, clean corn, popcorn, corn, sweet corn, and filled corn as well as flour corn. The popcorn kernel has a hard yet brittle, slightly translucent kernel that is glass-like. When popcorn is heated, the moisture inside the kernel turns to steam that builds up enough pressure for the kernel to explode creating the white, starchy edible mass that we all know and love. All popcorn pops a white color due to the color of the endosperm. But, 
if it is a colored popcorn kernel and you look close enough, you may see a little bit of the color in the middle of the exploded kernel. So that is the outer hull where the kernel color comes from. Then we also have the plain corn which is known for its hard outer layer which protects the small, soft, and the sperm inside the kernel. This hard outer layer is said to be as hard as flint, hence the name. They have a glassy appearance. It can also be puffed when heated, but often the kernels will crack open rather than explode. For the flower corn, varieties come in all colors. The color is contained within the thin outer layer while the interior soft starch is white. Therefore, most ground cornmeal will have a white gray color in appearance regardless of kernel color. Then we also have the peeled corn or what we call bent. It makes up the majority of commercially raised corn in the United States. It is primarily used for animal feed, processed foods, and ethanol. Dent corn was given its name because of the kernel's appearance as a rice. The kernels contain a hard form of starch at the sides and a soft type in the center. These center starches tend to shrink as the kernel dries, creating a dent in the top of the kernel. The type we know so well, it can be eaten right off the cob in its early or milk stage when it is still tender and juicy, identified by the release of a milky substance from the kernel when pressed. So these are sweet corn. Standard sweet corn originated from genetic mutations which prevent the conversion of sugars into starch. Sweet corn kernels wrinkle when they are dry as the sugars dehydrate when mature. So these are the varieties of corn. Additional information on the varieties of corn or types of corn. So again, we have the popcorn, clean, flour, dent, and sweet. So we have here the description as well as the culinary uses. Now, corn products include the following. So, we have corn grits, corn meal, and corn flour. Corn grits, they are ground coarsely from whole kernels, more coarsely ground than corn meal. For corn meal, these are the results from grinding the white or yellow corn, and they are smaller than corn grits. Then, for the corn flour, they are finely pulverized grits, similar to wheat flour. Grits are staple Southern American dish from ground, dried corn, and particularly rich in iron and B vitamins. Stone ground varieties are more nutritious as they undergo less processing than quick, regular, or instant types. For cornmeal, it is the traditional ingredient in cornbread. It is also used for texture and sweetness in cookies and other breads. Lastly, Corn flour, it is a type of flour that mills from dried whole corn kernels. It contains the hull, the germ, and endosperm of the corn, and it is considered a whole grain flour. And these are the pictures or images of corn products. So the corn grits, they are fairly healthy and they are typically served with high-calorie ingredients and then they are more coarsely than cornmeal. The cornmeal, it is also often used to dust baking surfaces for things like pizza to prevent the dough from sticking and can also be used as a thickener for soups and they are smaller than corn grits. Then lastly, for corn flour, it is usually yellow but it can also be white or blue depending on the variety of corn it uses. The texture is fine and smooth, similar to whole wheat color. And then finally, for cornstarch, which we are very familiar, they are used uh, in order to thicken some dishes. 
Another corn products, we have the corn starch. Refined starch whose form is like powder and then corn or breakfast cereals and snack foods. They are made from corn grits that are pre-cooked, dried, then up. Toasted flake or shredded with a desired flavoring and it is a popular breakfast food. Corn flour is the main ingredient for the Mexican tortilla which is a round flat bread microwave popcorn and it is a convenience product. Corn starch, maize starch or corn flour is the starch derived from corn grain. The starch is obtained from the endosperm of the kernel. Corn starch is a common food ingredient often used to thicken sauces or soups and to make corn syrup and other sugars. Breakfast cereals are mainly made of corn and either rice. For hominy, these are corn with the hull and germ parts removed, which uh, in local binatog is called lye hominy. Hominy is corn. The difference between maize and hominy is that hominy has to be processed a special way to be called hominy. And to get that puff, meaty texture that is similar to a bean yet tougher. Wheat, oats, and barley, and they are defined as processed grains for human consumption. Another types of grains is we have wheat. They are used in bread making worldwide. For wheat, we have these three market forms, the bread flour, all-purpose flour, and cake flour. Bread flour, milled from hard wheat and contains great amount of gluten, ideal for bread making. And then for all-purpose flour, these are milled from blend of soft and wheat flour containing 10 to 12% protein. It is used for general purposes because it contains less gluten than bread flour and then cake flour comes from soft wheat containing 9% protein more expensive than bread and all-purpose flour has a very fine texture and white in color and suitable for baking cakes and cookies wheat is one of the world's most commonly consumed cereal grains it comes from a type of grass that is grown in countless varieties worldwide Red wheat or common wheat is the primary species. Next is we have bulgur. It is a wheat product with a nutty flavor and chewy texture and it is also used as a substitute for rice. Bulgur is a cereal food made from the cracked parboiled oats of several different wheat species, most often from durum wheat. It originates in Middle Eastern cuisine. Another types of grains is we have duram. These are hard wheat product with a high gluten content and it is used for the production of commercial parts. Duram wheat, also called pasta wheat or macaroni wheat, is a species of wheat. It is the second most cultivated species of wheat after common wheat, although it represents only 5% to 8% of global wheat production. Then we also have sorghum or millet, smaller grains than rice kernels which originated from Africa and it is used as a substitute for rice and corn especially for animal feeds. Sorghum is a nutrient packed grain that you can use in many ways. It is rich in vitamins and minerals like B vitamins, magnesium, potassium, iron, and zinc. It's likewise an excellent source of fiber, antioxidants, and as well as protein. Another is barley. They are used primarily for the production of malt and the formation of animal feeds. These are hardy cereal that has coarse bristles extending from the ears and it is widely cultivated chiefly for use in brewing and stock feed. For number 8 types of grains, we have rye. These are hard cereal grass resistant to cold weather, pests, and diseases, and it is used for naked flour, whiskey, and feeds for livestock. Rye is a grass grown extensively 
as a grain and a cover crop and a forage crop. It is a member of the wheat tribe and it is closely related to barley and wheat. Dry grain is used for flour, bread, beer, crisp bread, some whiskies, some vodka, and animal foods. For the last types of grains, we have oats. They grow well in poor soil and dull rainy climate. It contains higher protein and fat content compared to most cereals and it is used mainly as breakfast cereals or as an ingredient for baked products. Oats are a cereal plant cultivated chiefly in cold climates and widely used for animal feed as well as for human consumption. Oats are a cereal crop or its grains used for making biscuits or a food called for porridge or for feeding animals. So those are the types of grains, whole grains, and cereals. Moving on to our discussion are the nutritive value of cereals. So these are the nutrient content that we can get from cereals. We have carbohydrates, which is 75%, protein, 10%. Water or moisture, 8 to 12 percent. Fat, 1 to 2 percent. For vitamins, we have thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. Also, minerals for 1 to 2 percent, which uh, that includes calcium and iron. Then, aside from those nutrient content, cereals or whole grains can lower cholesterol, triglycerides, and insulin levels. And then, whole grains can protect the heart. The benefits of whole grain cereals, they are low in saturated fat, but it is a source of polyunsaturated fats, including omega-3 or cholesterol-3. They are high in soluble and insoluble fiber and resistant starch. They are also an excellent source of carbohydrates and a significant source of protein. Let us now have the anatomy of grain or the parts of grain. So we only have four parts. The first one is the hull. These are the inedible outer layer of a whole grain that protects the inner kernel from sunlight, pests, water, and diseases or disease. The husk or hull in botany is the outer shell or coating of a seed. It often refers to the leafy outer covering of an ear of maize or in corn as it grows on the plant. Literally, a has or hull includes the protective outer covering of a seed, fruit, or vegetable. Number two is we have, or the second part is we have the bran. These are the multi-layered covering of the kernel. They are rich in protein, thiamine, and minerals. It constitutes 5% of the kernel. And there are two layers of bran in rice, five layers of bran in wheat, and then algerone layer is found in the bran. Bran, also known as Miller's bran, it is the hard outer layers of cereal grain. It consists of the combined algerone and pericarp, along with germ. It is an integral part of whole grains and it is often produced as a byproduct of milling in the production of refined grains. For the third part is we have the endosperm. It consists of starch granules, makes up 85% of the kernel and it contains 10% protein, 75% starch and small amount of minerals and fiber. The end sperm is a tissue produced inside the seeds of most of the flowering, uh, flowering plants following fertilization. For example, wheat and the sperm is ground into flour or bread and the rest of the grain is included as well in whole wheat flour while barley and the sperm is the main source of sugars for beer production. Then for the final part or for the last part, we have the germ or embryo. These are small parts found at the lower end of the grain. Source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. It makes up 3% of the kernel. 
and the part which is easily attacked by insects and transidity. The germ of a cereal is the reproductive part that germinates to grow into a plant. It is the embryo of the seed and along with bran, germ is often a byproduct of the milling that produce refined grain products. So those are the parts of grains that includes hull, bran, and the sperm, germ, or embryo. Now let us have the classification of starch. So we have three classifications and these are the native or natural starch, modified starch, or purified starch. Native or natural starch refers to the starches as originally derived from its plant source. They are tend to be better sources of nutrients compared to their process counterparts and their natural fiber content can help prevent blood sugar spikes and then for no modified starches these are starches that have been altered physically or chemically to modify one or more of its key chemicals and or physical property modified starch also called starch derivatives in which they are prepared physically enzymatically or chemically treating native starch thereby changing the properties of the starch. And then for the last one, we have the purified starch. They are maybe separated from grains and tubers by a process called wet milling. This procedure employs various techniques of grinding, screening, and centrifuging to separate the starch from fiber, oil, and protein. For our last topic is we have the functions of starch. So in this slide, we have the functions, the type of food preparation, and then the recipes for us to understand more the functions of starch. For the first function, we have binding and filling agents. So for the type of food preparation, we have meat loaves and meat emulsions, and the recipes in which starch acts as binding and filling or luncheon meat, hot dogs, Vienna sausage, chicken nuggets, chicken balls, kukoy, and tempura. For stabilizing, we have beverage, syrup, salad dressing, like chocolate drinks, fruit drinks, yogurt drinks, and cooked dressings. And for moisture retaining, for the type of food preparations, we have cake fillings and candies. For the different recipes, we have the fruit fillings, vanilla cake, and other kinds of fillings that we use in cake preparation. And then for the coating agent, we have breads, confectionery, and pastries. And for the examples of recipes, we have pandesal, biscuits, candies, as well as espasol. Another function is diluent in baking powder or examples of recipes are cupcakes. Next is coloring agent. We have the type of food preparation, toast or breadcrumbs like polvoron, lechon sauce, kare kare sauce, and even breadings. For thickening agent, we have this type of food preparations in sauces, gravies, pie fillings, and soups. So these are the recipes. For sauces, we have sweet and sour, uh, lechon sauces, lumpia, kare kare, and palabo. Pie filling, mango, buko, apple, or mango pie, buko pie, apple pie, pineapple pie. And then for soups, we have arroz caldo or porridge, and then cream soups, or any kind of thick soup. Then for the last function, we have the gelling agent. The type of food preparations or puddings and kakanin or different native delicacies like bread pudding, mahablanca, sapin-sapin, kuchinta, kasaba, and bibingka.